So let's define better the source code of this function. So here we're getting the enlistment head. Initially, the type of this was list entry. So if we do control L, it was a list entry. So now we can define it as a enlistment shifted pointer. I need to add a star because it's a pointer. So we can see this was also changed to the same type. So we're going to rename that to the actual p enlistment shifted. So this is really the enlistment head because it's hard coded, but this one is retrieved from the enlistment head to get the first one. So we rename it with L. I'm going to call it shifted. And actually, this is more the shifted one. This is more like the next one, because when it's going to loop over each element, it's going to initialize the current one with the next one. So it's looping over all the enlistments, getting the current one with initializing it with the next one. And then if the current one equals to the enlistment head, which means it reached the end of the list, it exits. So here it's going to retrieve the next pointer, but it's still going to work with the current one for the remaining steps of the loop. So we see it has the flag, if it's finalized. Here we see all the flags are enums, and here it's getting the next. So the interesting thing is there is a first while loop here, and the next was used here in the loop, but then it's becoming the actual current one again, because it's used in the, in the list and it's looping over over it. So we're going to do split out as new variable. So I'm going to add an underscore at the end. So we have an unknown boolean here. So here um, we're working with the p enlistment shifted, but we are pointing to the address of the cookie. And we know in the normal structure, the cookie is the first element. So here really it's retrieving the start of the enlistment. And so we can define that as a key enlistment pointer. And it does make sense because it's passed as op reference object. So it's increasing the ref count for this object. Here it's retrieving the enlistment flag. Here it's retrieving the transaction. So here, Ghidra wasn't able to mark that as an enum. However, we know that it's actually the flags from Kernisman. So it's actually a Kernisman flag. So if we look for the Kernisman flag, 4 is Kernisman finalized. Okay. So I'm just going to add a comment. So because it's enlistment finalized, if the current enlistment flags is finalized, which is if, if it doesn't end with this enum is not null, it's going to set a flag. So we could actually name this flag be finalized. And so this one is also be finalized. So let's have a last run on checking what has been defined. We see that the unknown two hasn't been defined yet. So we can see it's set to false in this loop. And in such a case, when it enters the if condition, it's going to actually set it to true. So if the enlistment flag is less than a certain value, and then later here, it's going to use that flag. And if it enters that if condition, it's going to call the TMP set notification resource manager. 
and then it's not used. So I think we can rename that boolean to notify because it's going to set a notification. Be notify. Be do notify. And so now that we have defined the be do notify, let's see where it's used. So it's actually set into this if condition and it's when the enlistment flag is less than zero. So here, the output of Kidra is a little bit confusing, but if you think about it, less than zero, what that means, basically it means that the higher bit is set. So if you look at the enlistment flag, the highest bit is the bit eight. So it means the enlistment is notifiable. So here we can add a comment saying the Kernisman is not available. Okay, we're good for the vulnerable file. Now it's time to do it for the patch one. So we have defined everything in the patch file as well. So we can see the structures have been imported and all the accesses make sense. We have defined the shifted pointer as well. And the flag for notification. So we're good as well for the patch file. So we have copied into uh, two source files, uh, one for the patch and one for the vulnerable file. And we have also changed the if condition similarly to what we did before. So it matches the vulnerable one. We have loaded the, them in the actual WinMerge tool and we have actually generated a report into a diff.htm. So loading the diff, we see a couple of changes due to the different names for the stack variables, which we don't care. We see the layout is a bit different for the P enlistment shifted, which we don't care. So we see the B finalized flag was removed in the patch file. So it was initialized to false initially in the vulnerable file. So then there is this loop looping over each of the enlistment of the list. And there's a little difference in the state of the transaction being tested, which we saw previously. But in this case, it's actually testing if the enlistment is notifiable. And if it's the case, it's going to do certain things. And at the end, it's going to actually set the be do notify flag potentially in both cases. So then it's actually modifying some stack variables, but we saw it's the same way. Okay, so now if we are in the case where we do notify, we're going to call the TMP set notification resource manager in both cases. However, in the patch version, something has been removed. So this test, so basically what it's doing is that it's testing if the enlistment flag is set to finalized. And if it's set to finalized, it's going to set the boolean be finalized to true, which we know doesn't exist. This flag doesn't exist in the patch version. Okay, and then we have a test to potentially go to the end of the function. In the vulnerable version, it was only testing the resource manager if it was online. If it wasn't online, it would go to the end of the function. And in the patch version, it's testing, it makes sure the resource manager is still online, but also that the transaction manager pointer is not null and that the state of the transaction manager is also online. Otherwise, it'd go to the end of the function. So a couple more tests which is interesting. But I guess the most interesting change is that it enforces in the patch per file that the P enlistment shifted pointer for the next iteration is set to the resource manager enlistment head flink. So basically what it does is it sets it to the very beginning of the list, starting from the enlistment head. However, in the vulnerable version, what it would do, it would skip over this if, and then it would basically reach this, say, okay, if the be finalized flag is set, and if it's not set, it's gonna go to next, which is basically going to take the P enlistment shifted from the P enlistment shifted flink. So it's gonna basically use the P enlistment shifted to get access to the next one, to continue in the list. However, if it is finalized, it's going to actually get it from the beginning of the list. So the difference is it uses the be finalized flag that was retrieved from the k enlistment flag to actually decide if it goes from the head of the list from here, or if it goes from the current enlistment 
to get the next one. However, in the patch file, it's going to always get it from the head of the list. So it's never going to use the current enlistment. That's very interesting. But if you think about it, if for whatever reason, the TMP set notification resource manager function changes the enlistment and frees it, potentially this k enlistment pointer is a stale pointer and may point to an initialized memory, like freed memory. So potentially there is some kind of race condition and it could result into a use after free, which is now not the case anymore because it's never going to reuse the canisman pointer because it's going to use the head of the list instead of the actual pointer for the current one. So we see that actually renaming everything helped us determining what the bug is and it's going to help us as well when we analyze more how to exploit this vulnerability in one of the next video thank you for watching